If you've already had a chemistry course, you've probably covered significant figures. And I know when I say that word, you probably are filled with warm, fuzzy feelings and uh, good memories and enjoy doing significant figures. I hope that's the case, at least. If you haven't had chemistry and this is new for you, uh, we'll cover it right now. If we take uh, 5.21 and divide it by 0 0.083 and then multiply by 87.5, our calculator says that is our answer. And if you wrote that as your answer uh, from our last video on measurement, you should know that that would be a dishonest answer. What we're trying to do here is significant figures is knowing where to honestly round our answer to. It's not in physics that we always round to three decimal places or something like that. We always round to the correct decimal place. And the correct decimal place is sometimes three, sometimes four. You know, it changes depending on the situation. So what we're going to have to establish here is what we're doing different. So let's remind ourselves of what we've already been doing in the past. When we have added and subtracted, we've always done so with exact numbers. So if I have five marbles and you add to that three marbles, you get, let's think about it, eight marbles. Everybody okay on that one? I hope so. Okay. But if we use a meter stick to measure the length of this stump at 35.2 plus or minus 0.5 centimeters, and then we use this micrometer to measure the thickness of this book at 3.6152 plus or minus 0 0.0005 centimeters. And then we take that book and we stack it on top of the tree stump. How tall is it all together? Well, we just add those two measurements. Okay, and if we just add those two measurements and write that, we have the potential of being dishonest. And yes, you can be dishonest unintentionally. But now that as we watch this video, we're going to learn how to round our answer to the correct place. Uh, this answer was not rounded correctly. And if you wrote that as your answer, you would be being dishonest. So let's look at what we've done with multiplying and dividing. If we had three squares on that dimension and seven squares on that dimension, well, yeah, we get 21 squares altogether. And that's because it was exactly three by exactly seven we would get exactly 21 altogether. But if I have this uh, area carpet here, and there's these little fibers and strings that hang off here, so you measure the length of that, and you measure the length of that, uh, it's kind of hard to say where what's the actual length. Maybe it's uh, 208, give or take, 5 centimeters on, on this dimension, and 131, give or take, 5 centimeters on this dimension. So if we just take the 208 and multiply by 131 and we write down the answer our calculator gives us, again, we are probably being dishonest, maybe unintentionally, but dishonest nonetheless. So we have to decide where to round our answer to. And this chain here is how we're going to always think about where we round our answer to. There's an old phrase that goes with chains, and we a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So if there is a crack in this chain here, and this link can hold 700 pounds, and this can hold 600 pounds, and that can hold 90, 900 pounds, but because of the crack here, this one can only hold 80 pounds, the strength of the chain, of course, is only 80 pounds. So if I take this number and I subtract this number and then I add that number, that's what my calculator gives me. But we can think of this, these three numbers as being links in a chain. And what we're trying to decide is which of those numbers is our weakest link. You might think that it's the smallest number here, but that's not going to be the case. We're going to have to decide which of these numbers is our weakest link. We'll come back to that question here. Degree of precision is going to help us decide which number is our weakest link. And none of these numbers here have plus or minus values shown, but they have plus or minus values implied. 
So when I say this is 8,000, what we're kind of saying that that is 8,000 plus or minus 1,000. Because of these zeros here, that number is where our uncertainty lies, and it's give or take 1,000. Okay, so it's 8,000 add 1,000 or 8,000 minus 1,000, that that measurement could be anything between 7,000 and 9,000. This 8,300 has an, this is our guess, and it has an implied plus or minus value of 100. So when we do that, we're saying, well, that would be 8,200 or 8,400. Anything in there would be the measurement of the thing we're measuring. Here, when we say 8,280, that number is our guess, and this is the implied plus or minus value there. So it's anything from 8,270 to 8,290. That would be the range of the answer. So my question now is, which of these measurements, which of these numbers is more precise? And it's this one down here. This measurement here is more precise because it fits into a smaller range. We're really narrowing it down to be very precise. You know, 8,000 give or take 1,000, that's not very precise if you give or take 1,000 from there. Let's do that again with this example. So we have 0, 1, and 2, and my measurement was just 1. Well, that implies that it's 1, give or take 1, that it's anything from 0 to 2. And if I say 1.0, well, that is a number. And this is my guess here. And I, I had smaller divisions, so I was able to guess one uh, more uh, tenth out there. So this says that I should have anything from 0.9 to 1.1. That would be my range in which that measurement is here. And 1.00 our ruler is broken up even into smaller divisions. So that number there would be our guess. And this is saying that we could do anything from uh, 0.99 to 1.01. .01. And again, that is the question is, which number is more precise? Well, it's when we have numbers out there further to the right, it makes the plus or minus value smaller. So whenever the plus or minus value is smaller, that number is more precise because it fits into a tighter range. So let's come back to this problem here. And then the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So of these three numbers, which one is the weakest link? Well, it's the number that is least precise. This one is give or take a hundredth. This one here is give or take a thousandth. And this is give or take a tenth. So this number here, I'm sorry, I did say that wrong. This number here was the, the largest. Uh, this was the most precise, but this was the least precise. So what we will do is this is the answer our calculator gives. We will round our answer to the same degree of precision as our least precise. Maybe I should just remind or, or say again that the degree of precision is just the location of your guess. So if this is my, my guess and that's in the tenths position, the degree of precision is a tenth. So we need to round our answer to that location, the same degree of precision as our least precise. So we're going to round our answer to 92.6. That's the only appropriate place to round our answer to. Let's do it with this one. So if we take 7,600 and we add 6,489, which of those numbers is less precise? Well, if I do it on my calculator, this is what the calculator gives. But here is my guess, and that has an implied plus or minus value of give or take 100. This is my guess, and it has a plus or minus value, uh, give or take one. So this is less precise because it's a bigger range of uncertainty. So we have to round our answer to the hundreds location. And to round appropriately, we have to look to the number to the right of that because that's bigger than five. We're going to round that zero up to one.
just standard rounding um, rules apply. So back to this problem, we didn't we, we said there was an issue here, but we didn't say where to round our answer to. So if we look to these numbers here, of those two numbers, this is a very precise measurement. This one's not so precise. So we round our answer to the same degree of precision as our less lesser precise number, our weakest link. So we're going to round to, this is in the tenths position, we're going to round our answer to the tenths position. So I say 38.8 centimeters. That's the only correct answer when we understand that those aren't exact answers, they're measured numbers. All right, I was showing you the rule for addition and subtraction, which means or implies that it is a different rule when we're multiplying or dividing. We have to understand that there are two different rules. When we look at addition or subtraction, we're looking at the degree of precision. But when we're multiplying or dividing, we do something else. If I take that number and I divide it by this number, then I multiply it by that number, that's what our calculator says. And you would probably naturally choose to round that somewhere, but where do we round our answer to? Significant figures is what's going to allow us to decide which of those numbers is our weakest link. And we abbreviate that sig figs. All right, so if we were to take this measurement here, we got this yellow line, and we look at that and say, yep, that made it past the, the two. It didn't, it made it past the 2.4, but not up to 2.5. So it's 2.4 something, we have to guess. And then our um, plus or minus value, I'm gonna say is 0 0.03. Uh, if those were maybe a little smaller, we would have said 0 0.05, half the smallest division. It's a little subjective. But of our measurement, these two digits, we knew with certainty. We got them straight off the ruler. We knew it with certainty. This number here, we were guessing at, okay? But our guess is, is still pretty important, okay? We say that all three of those numbers are important. We say that there are three significant figures. So not only the numbers that we know with certainty, but also the number we're guessing at are significant figures. And we count, there's one, two, three significant digits or sig figs. All right, so let's, let's do a measurement and it's gonna be 2.47 kilometers. So we knew the two with certainty, we knew the four with certainty, we are guessing at the seven but there were three sig figs in that number. So hopefully we're good with that. All three of those digits are important. All three are significant. If I were to now just take that measurement in kilometers and convert it into meters, I'd have to multiply by a thousand. The decimal would move three places this way. So we multiplied by a thousand to get it from kilometers into meters. The two was still known with certainty. The four was still known with certainty. We, will, we were still guessing at the seven, and this zero showed up only because we converted from kilometers to meters. This number here, even, there are, even though there are four digits in that number, there are only three significant figures, or three significant digits, however you would like to say. If we were to convert that answer into millimeters, there's a thousand millimeters in a meter, so we would have to multiply that by a thousand again, and this is how many millimeters there would be. We still knew the two and the four with certainty. We were still guessing at the seven. Those four zeros showed up only because we converted from meters to millimeters. There are still just three sig figs in that answer those zeros were not significant. All right, if I took a different measurement and I said it was 8.2 millimeters, I would have known the eight with certainty, I would have been guessing at the two, but that's 8.2 millimeters. To convert that into meters, I have to go do opposite, I have to divide by a thousand. 
There were two sig figs in this number, but if I divide by a thousand, I can get it into meters. We still knew the eight was for certain, the two was a guess. There are still just two sig figs in that number. Those zeros showed up for the same reason that zero showed up. We just converted into a different size unit. So those zeros are not significant. If we convert meters into kilometers, we have to divide by a thousand again. We're going to move the decimal three more places. So those are the significant digits, and those were not significant digits. Okay, so just generally speaking here, it's really easy to count significant figures. If it's anything but zero, it is a significant digit. If it is zero, the challenge is sometimes it's significant and sometimes it is not. So I've just shown you the, some cases where zeros are not significant. Zeros are not significant when they're just merely placeholders. Those zeros pushed the sig figs out there to the left, making it a really big number, or those zeros pushed those significant digits out to the right, making those digits a really small number. Okay, they were just placeholders changing the size of the answer, of the measurement. Okay, zeros are not significant when they are merely placeholders. So we have zero here and we have 10 there and we have this measurement and that looks like it's about seven plus or minus 0.2. We had to guess, okay? But there's only one sig fig in there. That was our guess, but it is a significant number. If I had a ruler that was broken up into smaller divisions now, now we're not, not guessing here. We know with certainty it's six and then we had to guess how far. I'm guessing 6.7 plus or minus 0.3. And how many sig figs are in this number here? Well, that was known for certain. That was a guess. There are two sig figs. If we broke the ruler up into even smaller divisions, that might be 6.73. I knew that with certainty. I know that with certainty. I am guessing at the three. But all three of those digits are significant digits, sig figs. Okay, so just look at that example. And then now we're going to do this example. Okay, looks very similar, except this line's a little shorter. This time I might guess it was six plus or minus 0.2. That's one sig fig. Now we're going to measure that same line with a more precise ruler. It's broken up into smaller divisions. So I can see clearly it's at six. I just can't see how far past six it is. So I know that was six. And then I'm guessing that it was right on six. 6.0. There are two sig figs in that number. This is a zero that is significant. If I measured that with an even smaller divisions on the ruler, now I can see that it did not make it up to there or there. I'm going to say it's 6.00. Okay. And there are three sig figs in that number there. So here's an example when zeros are significant. It's when they make the measurement more precise. If I say this is six centimeters and someone else uses a different instrument and says it's 6.00000 centimeters, well, that, those zeros are really honing in on the measurement. It's very, very precise. So these zeros were not placeholders but they made it more precise. So those zeros are significant. All right, let's do this example. Okay, we're gonna measure that and we can clearly see it made it past the two. It made it past 2.1, but not quite up to 2.2. That's 2.17. And I'm saying these are fairly small divisions. So I'm gonna say that's half the smallest division. All right, let's measure. And there are three sig figs there. Okay, one, two, and three. The numbers we know with certainty and the number that's a guess, all are significant figures. Let's measure a line that's just a smidge smaller. Okay, so we know it made it two. We can clearly see it did not make it up to 2.1. So it's 2.0 something. 
and then we had to guess where between there it was. I guessed it's 7. Okay, see how that was 2.17, um, and this was 2.07. So there's a 0, and it's significant for exactly the same reason that number's significant. We knew it with certainty. Okay, so that number has three sig figs. Here's a 0 that is significant. And the way I say it is that zeros are significant when they are sandwiched between non-zeros or sandwiched between significant digits. So this was an example where the zeros were not significant. They were just merely placeholders. They came and went as we changed the size of the, me of the unit. This is an example where the measurement, the numbers are significant because it made the number more precise. And here the zero was significant because it was sandwiched. So th there are, are five significant figures here that made it more precise. There are three significant figures here that made it more precise. There are four sig figs here because they're sandwiched. And because those zeros came after the decimal just like those, those zeros are significant, and then those are sandwiched in between significant and significant. So all of those are significant digits. Let's get some practice with that. First, I'm going to ask which number is our guess, and the 6 is here. The 7 is there, the 6 is there, the 2, the 5, is it the 4 here or the 0? It made it more precise, so that's our guess. Those zeros are sandwiched. It's the two. That was just a placeholder. These are just placeholders. These are significant because they're sandwiched. There's the decimal. Those came after the decimal, and it made it more precise. Same thing here. This is our guess, and that's our guess. That might be good to pause, rewind, play that again if you need to. Let's see how many significant figures there are. So those are not, but everything there is. That has four sig figs. This has two sig figs. Those were just placeholders. All of these are significant. Those are because they're sandwiched. Those are not because they're placeholders. These three are significant digits. Those are placeholders for the same reason those were placeholders. All of those are significant. These are because they're sandwiched. Those were just placeholders. All of these are because the zeros here came after the decimal and it made it more precise. All of these are, those are sandwiched, that was a placeholder. This only has one sig fig. Those were placeholders. Everything here is, because that was the, the last digit that was a guess, and everything between there is, is a significant figure. All of those, just those two, those were placeholders, and this one here has four sig figs. Those were sandwiched. All right, so here is the rule for measuring um, multiplying and dividing measured numbers. We have these three. Which is the weakest link? Well, this has three sig figs. This only has two sig figs. This has three sig figs. This is what our calculator says. But because this only had two significant figures, we're going to round our answer to just two significant figures. And to round here, we have to look to the number next to it. Because that's greater than five, we're going to round up. Okay. We, we can't change the size of it. We can't just say 5.5 .5 or something. Uh, we just turn those into zeros and they become placeholders. So that has two sig figs. 999 divided by 333, we can do that on our heads. And the answer is 3. Okay, but, but if you put 3, you're being dishonest. Because this has three sig figs. That also has three sig figs. Our answer needs to have three sig figs. So we say 3.00. Okay. Back to this example, 
this had three sig figs, this had three sig figs. So our answer needs to have three sig figs. Okay, so we're just gonna turn those digits into zeros. They become placeholders and we have three sig figs. So just, just to recap, there's two different rules. If we're adding or subtracting, we use degree of precision. This was only good to the tenths position, so we rounded our answer to the tenths position. When we're multiplying or dividing, our weakest link is the number with the least sig figs, okay, which this only had two. So we have rounded our answer to two. Sometimes we use an equation where we subtract and divide, or we do combinations of those three, like when we find percent error of difference. So let's say this is generally accepted as the right answer, and this is what we got. What we would do is we would subtract those two. This is what our calculator says, but we have to apply this rule up here. This was my weakest link, the least precise, so I have to round my answer to that position, 1.6. Now that we've done the addition and subtraction, we're now going to do the multiplication and division, so we use this rule. This has two sig figs, this has five sig figs, this is my weakest link, so we round our answer to just two sig figs. Because that number is bigger than five, we round up and call that 1.7% error of difference. All right, a couple little things we just gotta be careful of. Still, counted numbers are considered to be exact, meaning they have an infinite number of sig figs. So if I've got 90 pencils and each pencil is 12.9 grams, we put a pencil on a scale and found that it, and measured it at this. I can find the total mass by taking 90 times the mass of one. And this is what my calculator says. We're multiplying, so we count sig figs. How many sig figs are in this number? It looks like only one, but it is actually an infinite number of sig figs. It was exactly 90 pencils. We counted them out. This was a measurement, and that measurement only had three sig figs. So the least is three sig figs. We round our answer to three sig figs. We turn that one into a zero, and now our answer has just three sig figs. Another example we have to be careful of is with conversions. Conversions within the same system of measurement are exact. There are exactly 12 inches in a foot. How many sig figs are in that number? It looks like two, but it's actually an infinite because that is exact, exactly 12 inches in a foot. There's exactly three feet in a yard. That's an infinite number of sig figs. There's exactly 5280 feet in a mile. That looks like three sig figs, but it's actually an infinite because it's an exact conversion. Now the metric system, there's exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. There's exactly a thousand meters in a kilometer. Because that was going from metric system to metric system, metric system to metric system. But going from metric to imperial, that's not exact. It's, that's what the answer is exactly. But this only has two sig figs, not an infinite. There's approximately 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. That's how many pounds there are in a kilogram. So that's only two sig figs. And then a funny thing here, um, 2.54 centimeters is the same thing as an inch. That is actually an exact conversion because July 1st, 1959, the inch was redefined to be exactly 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so if I have how many inches are in 2,160 uh, feet, you take 2,160 feet times 12, and then we have to round our answer. There's three sig figs in this number. How many sig figs there? It looks like two, but that was an exact conversion from inches to feet. So it has an infinite number of sig figs. We're gonna round our answer to three sig figs and call it 20, uh, 25,900. If I take this number and I divide it by this number, this is the answer I get. Well, that answer only has one sig fig in it. This has three, this has uh, six. So we gotta round our answer to three sig figs. And how do we round that answer to three sig figs? 
we have to put it into scientific notation. If I say this is 1.00 times 10 to the fourth, that gives me this number here, but when we write it like this, we recognize that that number is significant, and we now have it showing that there are three sig figs. That's all I have for significant figures. More on that as we proceed through the school year.